Mr. Martin. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This is a resuming request uh, by the city of Valdosta for two parcels totaling 0.59 acres, and it is to rezone from conditional RM to single family residential R10. Uh, this property is located at 405 and 407 Pine Tree Road. The property currently contains two existing single family residences, which are rental properties. Um, this property has a very long history going back particularly to the year 2014 when all of these RM properties that you see on the screen plus the RP property to the southeast, uh, all eight of those were rezoned to this RM conditional category with the conditions that are there on your front page, there's four of them, and that was for one large apartment complex that never came to fruition. Um, over the years since then, pieces of this have been rezoned out of that conditional zoning to be their own apartment complex. The first one was the RP property at the corner of Azalea and Bay Tree. The next one were the two parcels that were combined together that are on the western side along Bay Tree Road, and that left five remaining properties. Three of those were rezoned back in July. They were on your agenda in right. June. That was for two separate apartment complexes. Uh, one also had a plan development approval associated. Um, up until that time, it was conceivable that the original site plan from 2014, which is in your packet, and I think we have a slide for it, <clears throat> right there. Yeah. And then this is the original site plan from 2014. It was conceptual. Um, it certainly had, I think, some room for redesign and improvement in 2014, but this is what the conditions were based on. I've highlighted the upper left corner, that is the subject properties that we're looking at this evening. But the five, which have been everything along Pine Tree Road, plus the connection, which you see that center building going down the Bay Tree, it would have been possible for someone to have salvaged this site plan to fit within those five properties. So we left well enough alone. When the other three parcels came through and got rezoned under a different design, they completely left these two hanging. And as you see from the conditions on the front page, particularly condition number three, um, which is there shall be an unbroken six foot tall opaque fence or wall on the western boundary, as well as the entire frontage of Pine Tree Road, there shall be no vehicular or pedestrian access to Pine Tree Road. Um, even with the current use that's there, which is grandfathered in not conforming, um, it is simply that a non conforming use. They do not comply with the current conditions. Because these conditions do not apply to only apartments, it only applies to the property. So even if these property were to be redeveloped, even a single family or a personal care home, these conditions would trigger. It's a somewhat of a problem for the property. Um, they would have to rezone it in any of those scenarios. What the city is proposing to do is simply wipe the slate clean, sort of like rolling back the clock to 2014, to when before this property was rezoned to conditional RM. It doesn't preclude someone in the future from requesting their own RM zoning, but they would need to come forth with their own application and more importantly their own site plan to demonstrate how that would look. Because this site plan from 2014 is dead in the water. And so that's why we're proposing to change the map back. Um, because the city does not own the properties, certain uh, uh, Georgia Constitution, state law, and everything else allow the cities under the police powers to adopt zoning. But we do, as a courtesy, grant um, or give notification to the property owners. So we have done that once informally by city council, and then more formally by myself as part of the regular notification process. So we've gone through the regular public hearing steps for this, just like we would any other zoning case. So with all of that being said, there's a lot of history and background information to this. Um, we're recommending approval of it, uh, simply to rezone back to R10, no conditions. Glad to answer any questions you might have. Yes, sir. Please. Yeah, I understand you say the city did not own this property? Correct. So they're sticking their nose in the business they should be getting involved. That would be an opinion. Yeah. Okay. Does the property owners, have they give consent to the rezone? They have been notified. There was some email exchange with one of them and a council member. Um, they expressed a desire to retain RM 
but from looking at that correspondence, it did not seem that they understood the conditions of the RM zoning that are on the property. With the present zoning, the two houses being rented out presently, would that preclude them from renting these houses on the present zoning? Not at all. Okay. If there was another situation that arose for another opportunity to do like, was it, was it not whoever it was that presented that proposal? Would it not have to be rezoned again to accommodate that? It would. Why are we even messing with it now? That's, that's my heart burn. Mm -hmm. If you look at the map, mm -hmm. there is RM zoning there with conditions that don't fit any of the patterns existing or proposed for the area. Even though you've got RM zoning that's touching all on three, two sides of it. Correct. And each of those have been rezoned for the uses that were there. Okay. That's what they do. July? Yeah. So, so the city did vote for this to be changed, correct? Correct. Okay. And this is brought to you by motion of the city council to initiate the public hearing process. Commissioner Bailey, did you have a question? Uh, so I suppose that if this gets rezoned back to what we want to get it to, the two houses that are currently there that are rentable, does that is that condition about vehicle and pedestrian access to pine tree? How does that fit? All these conditions go away. That's the main purpose of the rezoning. So right now, those houses are, are... Correct. If someone wanted to convert a house to a home daycare or personal care home, even if they made no changes to the building, the current zoning on the property would prohibit that. But if it were rezoned R10, it would be allowed. On the current houses, the way they sit, the vehicle traffic in and out, are they not meeting the conditions? They are. It's a non-conforming use. And as long as nothing changes on the property in terms of no changing the use, no changing the structure or the site layout, it just continues as is. They choose to make any changes. If they want to tear down the house and build a newer one in its place, perhaps a larger one, they couldn't do it without resigning. If they wanted to use the existing building for something other than single family, such as a home daycare or personal care home, um, several other things that are allowed in our town. They could not do that without rezoning the property. So uh, apparently we have uh, approved rezoning on this because we thought that somebody was going to do a park apartment complex there. The rezoning on this was part of an eight parcel request from five years ago. With the site plan, they cannot, is, is dead. So the conditions that are on there are meaningless in terms of what's there or what can be built there today. So we could vote to wipe this, what the slate clean now or when somebody comes in to utilize the property. I mean, they part, don't you know, and part of the motivation is to clean up the zoning map. I mean, we have several instances of proposed development um, some of you have been on the commission for a long time. I remember before the LDR, when plan development was a zoning change tied to a site plan. We have a number of those out there with the site plan that will never get built, but yet the zoning on the property is tied to that, which means anything to be built on that property has to be rezoned. Um, you have a case coming to you next month that is precisely that scenario. It's a planned development piece of property that's fairly large. Someone wants to put in a convenience store gas station there. They can't do it because it's not part of the original site plan. So they are being required to rezone the property to do something that should be is allowed by right in commercial center. Referring to this diagram we have on the screen, is that just a carryover or what, what is the little C? The little C means conditional zone. Well, why is the block over on the right outside of what we're talking about tonight still conditional zone? Because that property, those three parcels that you saw at your meeting in June, were rezoned from RM conditional to RM conditional, just a different set of conditions. And mainly they struck condition number, or rewrote condition number three, and struck condition number one. So all five of those parcels? Some are RM and some are RMC, even though they're the same property. The only ones that are RMC are the three that are to the east and southeast of this subject property. 
And those are the three that you saw back in June. This is not designated that right now? I just didn't put a label okay, on the other parcel. It's a purely technical question. I don't know yeah. what the same property on. Right. Straight to the south, you see two properties. Those have now been combined together. Okay. That is RM zoning without conditions, um, except for planned development that went along with it, which has its own conditions. Um, it's not part of the zoning. The RP has no conditions, and that was because of the apartments under RP zoning to the east of there, but we'll go to the port. And then the three in the middle were from June. One final question just from that. Uh, from the existing structure of the apartment buildings that are there and either one that we approved back in June or July, did either one of those have the ability to make an outlet into there? To if you go to the site plans, um, the one after 2014, the next one, that is the site plan that you saw back in June, except I've added the subject property in the upper left. Um, what is shaded are existing buildings. Um, the two complexes in the middle, the one on the north, has gone through plan review. They've now started basically construction. They've cleared the land. The one on the south has not been submitted yet for plan review. But you see from the layout of the plan, there's no connection to these properties. I'm just curious if they, they made provisions by that. And it was something that got noticed by staff and by city council too that now yeah, there is no ahead. there's no future phase to this. This would have to, if, if developed as apartments, they would have to have their own connection to Pine Tree Road and be an apartment complex on Pine Tree. Right. Which in twenty fourteen that was the major crux of the conditions was to prohibit that. Everything was to be oriented to Bay Tree or Azalea. Right. And these two by themselves can't comply with Any more questions for staff? Okay. All right, I'll open it up to the floor. Is there anyone here tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request? Please come forward. Anyone who wishes to speak on behalf of the request? If not, is there anyone here tonight wishing to speak against the request? Please come forward. If there's no one here wishing to speak against, I'll turn it back to the commissioners for any final discussion. And if not, I'll call for a motion. Legally, the city has full discretion. The only requirement the city has under state law is to put an ad in the newspaper. Yeah. As a matter of practice, we go beyond that. We post a sign on the property. We send certified letters to surrounding owners and a different certified letter to the owners. Yeah. None of that is required by state law. Well, they live out of town. One lives in Moultrie, which has responded to the city council's yeah. emails. The other one lives in California. Um, I still have heartburn with it because we're changing something and two months from now we might be changing it right back again. So therefore, I make a motion we recommend denial of this to the city. All right. We have a motion for denial. Do I have a second on that? They would be required to go through a public hearing process for even an R10 use. That includes building another single family home there. 
I mean, that's not a likely scenario, but it is a possible one. One of the biggest considerations is RM zoning that was put there is based on a site plan. That's why the conditions. That site plan has completely changed. All that's left are these two parcels that have no site plan attached to them, just conditions based on a different site plan. You know, they're unmanageable now. So, so based on based on what you said, they could anybody that wanted to do a personal care home, they could tear it down and run it back through and get the rezone. Just they would be required to do a rezoning. Under R10 zoning, it's simply a conditional use. If it's a small one, it's not even a conditional use. It's a permitted use. They just go get their business license. Family personal, uh, family daycare, same way. Small one, just go get your business license. No expense, no public hearing, no waiting. I'll make a comment. I understand both sides of this issue. One of the things, one of the reasons, of course, that we had this protection of Pine Tree Road was because of the residential outcry mm -hmm. about having any intrusion into their neighborhood. And so what we were trying to do with the other zoning for 2014 was to protect Pine Tree. Mm -hmm. Pine Tree can no longer be protected. If somebody went in with multifamily, multifamily dwellings, they would have to have access by Pine Tree. And that's the thing to me that I think is more important, you know, because if the, uh, the residents of this neighborhood was there felt very strong. We had a room full of people both times these issues came up against having any kind of multifamily situation because it was going to change their neighborhood. So I'm more in favor of changing it back to the way it was and having these two parcels there. It looks, I mean, at the end of the day, somebody's going to have to come through and get a zoning change and go through this anyway. So why not put it back as residential like the people who are living around these two parcels wanted it in, in the first place and then let whatever happens in the future happen? Because regardless, again, it's going to have to be heard and changes will have to be made. And I don't have a problem with that. If we had the owners of this property that goes up here first in the city, decided to do it right now and then six months from now we're going to come back and potentially may not ever happen come back and redo it again it, it, it's really irrelevant i just don't like the fact that the city is doing something that the owners of the property has not requested and historically for the what 99 percent of the time the owners have requested the change in the zoning on the property now here we are, even though we've sent letters out to them, they're not here. Have they sent them, give you a response back, if I may? And you can read into that what you will. Lack of response, what does that mean? No, we don't have a new motion on the table, but I do want to ask a question. Those conditions that were put in place in 2014, do they not expire at some point in time and it just reverts back? They are tied to the zoning that's on the property. Okay. And these two parcels are the only ones left of that original approval. So they're on there forever until we, we the city council, rezones it to something else. Okay. Madam Chair, I, I concur with Commissioner Willis on his concerns about the city of Alabama, albeit they have the legal right to do it. Uh, I have a, somewhat of a problem with that. I can also. Here, uh, Commissioner Wiles comments so that probably it should go to R10. I just don't like the city doing it as opposed to property owners, but since you just mentioned that they're not here, so I'm inclined to vote in favor of changing it to R10. All right, I'll ask for a motion. Madam Chair, I'll ask for a motion. Yes, Commissioner. For uh, file number BA 2019-7, I'd like to make a written motion that we recommend approval of this request. All right, we have a motion for approval. Do I have a second? Really? <laughs> okay, we have a second. All right, is there any discussion before we vote? If not, all those in favor of the motion for approval, raise your right hand. Yeah, okay, all those against? All right, motion carries, thank you.